Good morning. This is Mimi from Vancouver UFO. It's July 25th, 2021. And today I'm delighted to introduce a guest host, Elena Andrade. She will be interviewing a me our member, Bernie Ong, who has some really fantastic pictures and many great things to say about the mysterious megalithic structures in China. So I'd like to welcome you both and wish you a very, very great show. Okay, hi everyone. I am really excited about this presentation today. We have our fellow member, Bernie Ong, presenting on the mysterious megaliths of China. And um, Bernie's bio here is, Bernie migrated from Ma Malaysia in 2004. He began his intensive reading about megalithic culture in 2017. Brian Forster inspired him to go further than just getting excited about it. He surfed the internet every day and began to compile his research by countries. After two years, it remains a bottomless pit. Today, he will be speaking on the megalithic structures in China. Bernie, I just want to clarify, is it all right with you if people ask questions at, with each yeah, yeah. slide, if yeah. they come up? Yeah, that'll be is okay. a dynamic conversation going today? Yeah, yeah. But okay. I have the slides, so I, I wouldn't get lost. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll start off with this uh, Hua Shan. Um, they call it the mysterious grottoes, but it's kind of misleading because it's not really a grotto. Uh, there's nothing there. So there's no statue of Buddha or anything. So they shouldn't be calling this a grotto in the first place, but it's okay. His name was given by the president, Xi Jinping. So I always like to compile things starting with a map. So it's right there. And if you go to Google Earth, it's right there. Just give you an idea. Um, Huashan Hill, uh, sorry, Huashan Mountain is actually a hill. It's not really a mountain, like big mountain. It's just a hill. And the caves, they are not really so no idols, nothing. They, they, there's nobody worshipping anything there. So this will be like, if you go there as a tourist, this is how it will look like as you go nearer. And I do find this interesting, so I just throw it in. Uh, a real photo versus a picture and art. So I always wonder why Chinese art are like this until I see this is actually what they saw, right? So they, they kind of like draw what they actually saw. So I just find it interesting. Um, over here is kind of a misty most of the time. So I, I just find it interesting. Um, anyway, there are, I think, two caves that is open for tourists. Uh, cave number 35 is one of them. And if you look at this cave, that itself is one cave. And this particular cave has 36 chambers. So it's very big. This one can fit in probably a few Walmart inside. So it's really big. Um, if you look at this, these two pictures, I would probably consider this as one cha two chambers, you know? one chamber each or something like that. And uh, the largest cave is the Qingyang Cave. Okay? It's uh, the underground palace, they call it. But uh, no one really knows if it's the palace or not. It's just the name. Um, it, it's kind of like not made not nature, so it's called man-made, but uh, I don't think there's any man who made this thing. There's no information. And uh, this one, I just want to show you the magnitude of this. If you look at this guy here, see the size, all rectangularly carved. 
So, and uh, this is one of the Qingyang cave inside the grotto number 35. So, there are some measurements they give on the uh, internet, the, the bloggers. Uh, so, I took some of the measurements and uh, made my own calculations. It comes to like 216,000 uh, uh, cubic meters. It's kind of uh, too big for human beings to make. That's one thing. And it's also like, if you make something that big, uh, there should be some kind of a record. You know? So it's also weird that we don't have anything. And this is another cave, 1C cave. It's 71,400 cubic meter. And still nothing. No, no hieroglyphs, no carvings, no bones, no chicken bones even. <laughs> Ernie? Yeah? Can I ask you a question about what the caves themselves are made of? What kind of rock material? That one, I think, is probably like limestone. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and Ernie, I had a question. Yeah. Before we do, do, do you have any clue how they were formed? You said you, you kind of seems like you're alluding to they're not man-made. There's no records. Um, how do they think that these things have been formed given the shape and preciseness of it? Uh, we don't know yet. Nobody knows. So your guess is as good as mine. So we, we still have no clue about okay. this uh, when it was built because there's, no, there's nothing, absolutely nothing for you to use as a benchmark to, to even guess anything. So, even like, okay, come back to this. Slide. So, the two caves, I'm looking at a total of 287,400 cubic meters. And the rest <coughs> is just an assumption. I'm just using an assumption based on uh, what I can find from the internet. Uh, the other 34 caves, based on 15,000 cubic meters, you'll come to 510. So you're looking at more or less the 30, the cave number, the grotto number 35 is actually uh, almost 800,000 or in that range, 800,000 cubic meters. So it's kind of in line with what they say is about a million. So, and if you calculate the rock density, I use a limestone rock density, you come to like 1.6 million tons. So that's a lot of rock. <laughs> and uh, won't be won't be possible, I don't think, with chisel. And uh, we're not talking about carbon steel, you know, you can get from Home Depot. These are like ancient chisels, you know very primitive bronze type of chisel. So if you were to take all that, you can fill up kind of like one third of the pyramid in terms of the volume. So the question is, where are those rubbles? I have a question, another question about the rocks um, themselves. Is there any debris pile nearby or a, a potential? No pyramid made from something like that that's overgrown? No, nothing. Okay, thank you. So that's another mystery people are asking at this volume, where are the rubble and uh, how, how did they even get rid of the rubble? If you do the calculation and you use a modern excavator, it would take you a long time, few decades to finish it. Like you got to find a spot to put it or you want to use it. You got to manage how to use it. Uh, at that volume, without any record, it's just not possible. So if, uh, as a tourist, I think you can go from here. They bring you from another angle, from another side. Um, this one is actually they found from a, a farmer. The farmer was just... Uh, 
pumping out water. And what happened is uh, they, they just, the water just kept going down uh, the water level, but it never finished. So they, they got some government people to come in and uh, do continue and pump out the water. And then they found out it's actually it's just a lake. It's, it's, a, it's a channel, it's a lake inside. So at this point, I mean, from this point, uh, it's still further, you can see. I don't think they're going to pump it. It's a it's kind of a interesting for tourists to go in. Imagine all this, but probably the water level will be up to here, maybe. You know, it's all covered. People don't know until now. So that's, that's what you get if you go there as a tourist. You get a boat ride. <laughs> Uh, this one I just want to show you if you go in look at this size here the guy versus the pillar and I like to see the details I, like these are all 90 degree here kind of uh, interesting because we can't do this with machine today so if you look at the uh, the walls, if, if you try to imagine, if you are doing the carving from one cave to another cave, and then you are not supposed to break through the wall and it's 50 centimeter thick, uh, it's very hard to do. You got to have some engineering measurements and uh, stuff like that. You, you just can't organize 100,000 people and carve. Uh, 36 k all within the thickness and not even one people make mistake and knock through the wall. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very difficult. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but don't forget this is pitch dark. Okay. So that's another mystery. Uh, I, I know that the aliens live in the dark, so I thought <laughs> maybe that's that's done by them and that's where they live. <laughs> so they didn't find anything. Like whatever in your head you want to ask, I can bet there's no answer. <laughs> so this is one of the cave, you can call it. It's very tall, very wide and very long. And there is no reason it's all very random. It's not like you build a house, you need a kitchen, you need a living room, uh, you know, you need a hall, toilet, bathroom. These are just square spaces randomly all over. It's kind of uh, uh, hard to detect, to deduce what is, uh, what is all this for. So we're looking at uh, one kilometer square area right under our feet and nobody knew for for so long my my guess is this could be like ten thousand years old those are uh, the ice age days yeah i forgot to mention um when when they pump the water out that is above the river the water level so that means if it was submerged at one time, that would be probably during the ice age uh, or something like that, around that time, or no, not the ice age, after that. So you may be looking at 10,000 years ago when this part was submerged, and then when the water is getting less. Um, so you have to actually pump the water out into the river. So that's what they're doing. Um, right now, uh, they don't know how old is this thing. So, if you go by this, uh, uh, they call it the lichen. The thing I have to wait for another slide. But anyway, uh, they believe that based on the stalactite, uh, this is like fifteen hundred to two thousand years old. Uh, 
it is kind of like based on this study uh, they would pin this down to the Jin dynasty and they can't be sure because there's also other way of of uh, detecting the age like the like a no like a no graphy or something they, they look at the lichen so that would be like a few hundred years ago and then they have carbon dating few thousand years ago so we really don't know how long how old is this thing and look at i want to show you this one here on this cave the striations these are the clue as to how it was carved and there's the 90 degree drop okay and this side is not carved so it's kind of weird that they can do the ceiling and not so much on the wall and then it is very common to see the striations at an angle so there's a machine that can literally do the side or maybe they did carve here and they just use another machine to polish it up to get rid of the striation. Anyway, it's kind of interesting. And uh, this one is about the, the, the living organism that when they pump the water out and stuff like that, uh, I would expect some fish bones or some living creatures left behind but the water that is left behind here is crystal clear no fish no nothing so again there's barely any clue so even with the water left behind they can't have any <laughs> they still have no idea how to make any sense out of this so it's kind of like uh, if you look at this uh, pyramid in Egypt, and uh, if you believe there's a pyramid in Bosnia, the tunnel there, it's also crystal clear water. And those waters are like very highly charged and very good for energy, positive energy, that kind of thing. So I wonder if there's any connection here. Um, Bernie, yeah, you know anything about the chemistry of the water? Like, is it like the Dead Sea, real salty in content? Um, no, this is not salty water. This is river. Oh, yeah. but is, is there some other chemical in there that makes it not habitable or or element that you know of? No, oh, I don't know. I didn't really. I don't think I can find information on that. It would be it would be interesting to see the uh, the crystals of the water, you know, like Dr. Yamoto's photography, to see uh -huh. what the molecular structure is. Oh, yeah, that would be interesting. Maybe they have done this research, but uh, it's just within the in the collection of scientists, all written in Mandarin and <laughs> not posted. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I can't find anything on the internet in English. <laughs> So, uh, here, this chisel mark here, this is all over the world. So, I can, I can have another discussion on this, on the chisel marks, but that'll be for another day. So, the technology is definitely not, not uh, from today, not a recent technology. And... I also read consistently, they mentioned about the slope of the hill is precisely the slope of the wall. I'm not sure what it means. I can't find pictures or any writing. But it's very common when I keep reading the same thing over and over, that the wall of this mountain here, the slope of this mountain, the Huashan, is the same as something like within the chamber, the slope is the same. But there's, there's not much to read about. I'm just curious where do I find more info. But 
it's interesting. They already noted the angles. They kind of like measure everything. Maybe it's trying to say that mountains were, are shaped as well. Not, yeah. Not natural. Yeah. But I just throw that in so that I, I, I remember next time when I want to look into something, I still have something to go for. <laughs> it also, well, it suggests that they had very precise instruments for measuring the slope. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 They can go down to like uh, less than 50, 50 centimeter. They can be like, I think in... Uh, where is that? Malta, I think. They have these underground tunnels where the walls are very close. Same thing, something like this, and they never break through the tunnel. You know, it's like you can dig randomly here and there all over, but they never touch. They're so close. So there's something like they can do in pitch dark and then they know it's not going to break through. <laughs> They seem to have some laser. <laughs> maybe sound would would. Uh, yeah, maybe they use sound to measure the thickness. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still a very good skill to have if you can do that. <laughs> so, Huashan is quite a mysterious. There's quite a bit of things going on and to see, but. Uh, I'll go on to the Longyu cave for now. Uh, it's about two and a half hour drive. Um, where do I go from this one? Hold on. Right. Let me see. Okay. So, the next one will be in Long Yu. I'll show you that later. Just another interesting note. Uh, they call it the mystic line. If you look at all these megalithic sites, yeah, and if you use uh, the globe, the round, the round earth, and the plot, it's kind of like they need to know where is the position if they need to contact us so it's, it's kind of like they there's a kind of like the same area if you're coming down from a spaceship and the, and the earth is spinning they can contact you from any point that's how i think so maybe that's why they need to, they have this mystic line these were all at one time being used by some aliens, alien stuff going on. Similar to ley lines. I'm yeah. Assuming. Yeah. That's Thank you. Something like the ley lines. But this is all within 30 degree, 29, 30. So they call it the mystic line. Um, I've gone through all this individually. Uh, it's quite interesting. Even for something like, say, Persepolis, it looks like, yeah, the Romans and the Persians, they did the stuff here. But if you look closely, some, some blocks are so big and some of the blocks are uh, carved in such a polygonal way that uh, it doesn't even make sense for you to, to use that kind of technology. It's like if you if you carve a block and you put another block, it is stacking up. That makes sense. But if you carve a block and a block that holds like this, maybe. But what if you carve a block that can like a three D, yeah? like you need to go in and then you can click. That doesn't make sense. You know. So it seems like uh, people like to imagine ancient people are sophisticated and capable but i think this is beyond that time so anyway interesting stuff going on here that's for hua shan and i'll bring you to long yu Okay. 
So this is another case, similar, but a little bit more uh, possibly human because of this carving tail. But still, we have no clue who did it. So that's where it is on the Google Earth. I'll bring you to Longman later. So just to share with you, these are like 11, 12 hours away. Just to give you an idea <clears throat> how far they are. Okay. This site uh, was discovered in 92 and they have 24 caves. And this magnitude is also impressive. If we look at 30 meters by 30 by 30, so the floor itself is 900 meters square. It's pretty big. And you look at the volume, 27,000 cubic meters. So, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they only have one, uh, maybe two by now, uh, open for tourists. I'm not sure. But this one is the main one so far, the main event for tourists. They have, they have for, for excavators, uh, so for excavating this site, I think they might have gone through all already, but you get to see one. Okay, oh, this is the one I'm talking about for a lichenometric dating. Yeah, same thing. They, they use the same carbon dating, it's about 500 years old. They use uh, carvings based on the carvings. Maybe they will say it's the Ming Dynasty. You know. uh, sorry, the, the Jin Dynasty. So we don't know who made and how long it was made. And some based on the tools, they go far as far back as like 5,000 years ago, based on the tools, because uh, uh, I don't know if they if they use if they found any tools or not. So everybody is just guessing for now. And then you look at this kind of striations, just go straight like degree. They can turn to the ceiling or the ceiling turn to the wall. This is kind of out of out of our ability and this one they just choose to go around it so they seem like different different technology used and same thing underground water no clue i thought with water we can have some clue but apparently not mm. I'm just curious because at this time, at around this time, um, we are just living in wooden huts. Okay? And then it's kind of inconsistent. I always thought that, let's say today we use drywall and two by four studs to build our house. So we would use the same thing to build our temple, church, mosque, whatever. We will also use the same thing to build offices. So the place of worship, the place of work, and your home should be consistent. So to do something like this, and we are still living in wooden hut, is not consistent. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I just find that if you are still staying in a wooden hut, and you just under some emperor going to order you to build something megalithic and all you have is a bronze chisel and you can do something like that. It just doesn't make sense. You, would, you wouldn't be living in, but you would be living in something that made of rock. 
rocks, you know, something more concrete. You can carve this out, use it, some of it for your own house. That will be more logical. But anyway, this this unit, uh, this uh, cave has no. Uh, they don't have any clue other than the the, the picture, uh, the carvings on the wall. I'll get to you later. So, just like uh, any any cave, whether it's man-made or or not man-made or nature, people will come in and build their own uh, living waters. Yeah? And if you look at this, somebody make use of this. And if you were to do this in a natural cave, it looks logical. But if you were to do this, if you build all this, all this uh, mud bricks or something like that, mud bricks or what, and use it to live, you live here, they tend to conclude you therefore carve this cave. That's the mainstream archaeology. There's a tendency for that. If they find this uh, blocks of small little mud brick maybe, and they say, oh, since you live here, you must have carved this cave. So that's how normally main, mainstream will go. So I don't think so. I don't think I think they just we just come in and use. So if you were to look at the uh, Bronze Age, we can go as far back as the Shang Dynasty, the Xia Dynasty, which is the first dynasty, is a little bit older. I don't think they are in the Bronze Age. Yeah. But they are saying if it is a branch age civilization, it has to be like uh, emperor order you to do this. It's a it's a very big project. So if it is the Shang and Dynasty, I I find it hard to believe that the Shang Dynasty and the Zhou Dynasty for the last almost. 2000, 1000, more than 1000 years, and they have refused to write anything or what. <laughs> you know? so, I just use this to zoom in uh, to highlight these variations. See, there's a machine that goes this way, the, the, the cutting tool, and that machine is also going this way okay so that means there's something like a machine that spins and scrape at, you know it's spinning and scraping at the same time so that's how i see it. there's a machine that scrape this way oh sorry it's okay so it's, it's going one way uh, and the machine is going left and right left to right something like that And I happen to, to find this interesting also. If you look at the striations, uh, they have concluded, not me, the scientists, huh? they have concluded that this gap here okay, is way too consistent to be man-made. It has to be machine. So now the question is, where is the machine or tool? So, you can't do this man-made, it's too consistent. And this is also another thing related to alien. This might not be the the the, the paragraph or what that says about alien, but this this finding, this writing, they did actually mention about alien abduction. So what an interesting thing for you guys. <laughs> Can you tell me where they found that manuscript, Bernie? Um, no, I maybe I can find it, but I didn't record down in my presentation. Uh, Thank you. It, it wouldn't be, yeah, no, no, I wouldn't know. I forgot. 
I'll, I'll look it up maybe when I have time. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, um, what is this? Yeah, well, I was looking around for some ancient tools, yeah, bronze tools. Most of the pictures, they, they'll come out like this. These are the kind of tools that is related to ancient tools. And uh, this one looks more like uh, something that deal with wood. Uh, you know, maybe you can use it as a bowl to deal with earth, scraping something. But not limestone or granite. You can't do this with granite. So these are these are way out of out of proportion. So if I were to calculate how many of these is required to do this cave, I think I'll come up with like a hundred million of this chisel. Like a hundred million. So not possible. There'll be a bronze chisel in the street at that time. <laughs> so, if you look at this modern technology, oh, yeah. old technology, that's like two different stories. Totally cannot even match. And our technology is right now like this high speed power motor and stuff like that. And that's how you create something that is consistent. So this is definitely a machine to mark, not a man-made to mark. To so talk about the carving, look at this. If you look at this thing here, you will know that it's the original state. So I'm, I'm guessing this whole pillar here could have been just nothing, okay? And then human being came along. So the Chinese being Buddhist, they carved a Buddha. That's very normal. If this is probably, if this is in India, it would probably be a Hindu god. So we can't really tell who made the cave, but we can tell who made the statue. <laughs> And I find this interesting, I read it somewhere. There's a relation between Greek and Buddhism, Greek influence in Buddhism, but there is no such thing as Greek influence in Taoism. I don't know what's the difference in terms of these arts here, but they, they can tell this is Taoism and it has some Greek influence. So that's something very strange. So, by the way, how do they even do this in the dark? That's another thing. So I'm, I'm just opening up the idea, possibility that this is not even done by human. <laughs> Bernie, there's also um, speculation that the Greek and Hindu gods and goddesses were actually off-planet beings that came to visit Earth. Yeah, yeah. So there's that parallel there between both the yeah, kingdoms I'm starting and to see that, uh, you know, religions were at one time a source uh, from the other world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm using sandstone as a uh, sandstone, limestone, not much of a difference, 2.2 kilogram per cubic meter square. Uh, we are looking at uh, 24 k at 27,000 cubic meter. So you come to about 1.5 metric tons of stone. 1.5 metric tons, that's 1.56 million. It's a lot. It's too much for a human human in even in one in one dynasty let alone within one emperor uh, so everywhere i read is usually mentioned one 
million cubic meter. So it's kind of consistent, but I, I just did the calculation to see like how far is am I from this. This, this is what you will get over 1 million cubic meter. Um, if you just, maybe I think they kind of like copy each other as a blogger. They read from you and then they copy that number and then somebody copy from somebody <laughs> that number. Nobody really do a calculation. So I did my own and I come up with uh, 1.5, 1.6. So it's, I know, at least I know in my head, it's, it's reasonable to assume above 1,000. Uh, sorry, 1 million. But at that volume and no clue, that is a mystery. Uh, I have a question, Bernie. Yeah. Um, the stones that they found, um, did they find them nearby or were they stones that were brought from from places far away like they are in other pyramids? No, no. There's no rubble. So they were from the area? Pardon? Uh, the stones were from the actual area? No, we don't find any stone. Just a cave. That's also another weird stuff. Okay. Okay, thank you. If, if they have if, if we were to carve that, we not only have to manage the people carving, say 50,000 people carving, you need probably another 50,000 to remove the, the piles, right? So we don't have any leftover stones. It's just like vanish into thin air. <laughs> so imagine that much stone is missing like who wants to steal it anyway <laughs> maybe the incas took it yeah <laughs> so we do have pyramids in china so i'll get into that next time but uh, i was thinking maybe they carved that for the pyramids in china <laughs> we have one as big as the, the base uh, is as big as uh, the one in Egypt, the base. So if you look at look at uh, this base here, okay, it's about 230 meters. Uh, the one in China is also about this size. The only thing is it's only up to this one third of the height. And they cover it and they call it the Shiwangti Mausoleum. So it's never been excavated but we know it's a pyramid there. And this one is just for you guys to see the magnitude of this. If you were to take uh, 720,000 cubic meters at, and every block is this size, you can stack it side by side from Vancouver Airport all the way to golden that's how much rock being taken out and where is even one block <laughs> we didn't even have one block so yeah this slide here i just want to show you the comparison would you know the difference if i didn't tell you this is from turkey Probably not. It's look quite the same. So, Bazaar Cave in Turkey, another mystery. No hieroglyph, no tools, no bones, no suit. Same mystery, no answer. This is another interesting picture I found always together with some some megalithic sites in China. Uh, this one is kind of a tricky. At first glance, I thought this is not part of the cave, but uh, it does seem like it is one of the cave structure. So interesting to know. Uh, if you have any info, then let me know. But this here the striation here and then there's three lines going here 
these are not the two marks of modern or ancient. It's just alien stuff. <laughs> and uh, if we were to carve this, I wonder if this is a straight and then it curved to the end. But it's kind of a, a, what do you call, a mystery because why would we need to build something so big? It's, it sounds like an underground project for aircraft. Look at this light here. That will give you the probably the height of a human being. So that will give you an idea of how big it is. It's, it's too big to make into a normal tunnel. You just need to walk from one end to another end. And it doesn't look like a room for any purpose. It's just a channel from one end to another. It's kind of weird. And wh where is this located? Uh, I find this... Uh, it's, it's not to say, look, I, I couldn't attach this to any, any solid uh, uh, location. But I, I found this picture along, you know, like bloggers, they write stuff and then they throw in a picture without telling any story. Oh. So um, this picture, I can't really tell you where, but if you, I got this as I was reading about this site. So this long use site, I would say is probably might not have this tape. Uh, I don't. I don't read anywhere that this cave is belong to whatever site. But I think it's long you if if it is there. A lot of things going on. I don't know why one point five billion Chinese nobody interested. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't come across um, UFO groups in China who are researching the origins of the caves or who have. Theories about ETs? If, if I were to just type Long Yu Cave, Mystery, Grotto, whatever search engine you want to use, what you want to write, it will come up pretty much more or less the same people writing. Yeah. Yeah. So at that time, like this is probably in 2017. So I just spent one day for one site and uh, I didn't really go into this particular picture okay yeah but um, until now i find it a mystery i can't find any sure writing that okay this one is belong to this site and is uh is is not a man-made uh, i sent you an interview last week bernie did you get it of a young girl chinese girl that lives in australia and she was being interviewed by grant cameron no. Um, she she just did a, a UFO symposium in China, and she's been she's banned from China forever. Oh. But she was talking about there are UFO groups there. Oh. They're very underground. They're not allowed. I see. The government is really clamping down on it. I see. Yeah, probably why. Uh, yeah, I didn't get your link, so if you don't, oh, I can okay. check it. it. Check it. I I did send you one. Okay. So, just a, just to give you an idea, the time frame for Great Wall of China is built over a period of one thousand seven hundred years. Okay, and it's magnificent, but it's not mysterious. This is one hundred percent doable. Okay. It all started from one wall to another wall, another one wall, and then it got leaked up into a bigger wall. <clears throat> and the older wall, um, they have a different method of making the technology there at that time is consistent with what they can do. And today, if you look at the last one, the, the Ming Dynasty, they, the way they do the stuff are more sophisticated, concrete, you know, so it's consistent with, if you look at the material they use, it will be consistent with the material they use for their house, their palace, their temple.
So it's not a mystery. Great Wall of China is not a mystery. It's very doable. It's done over like 1,700 years. And then you look at the pyramids. Okay, these are like way back. You know? um, we are, if you look at the day of Jesus, we are closer to Jesus. Okay, we are closer to Jesus than the Egyptians going backward. You know what I mean? If if the Egyptians here until the day, if the Egyptians were to build the pyramids here, it would take two thousand years, six hundred years before Jesus is born. The same thing. We are only 2021 years. So it's like another 600 years to go <laughs> if we were to compare it where Jesus is born in the middle. But I just want to show you the magnitude of this. At this time, okay, the Egyptians can do 11 huge mega projects, okay, all within 250 years. And then in China, we have this long man, long you, and no story. So it doesn't even make sense. If you look at our civilization evolve, we have almost the same time in terms of history, maybe 1,000 years different. But if you say they can do this, you know and their technology is so advanced. And then you look at China, we do this. This is also advanced technology. But then suddenly we went backward. Right here, our Great Wall of China, you know how, what it looks like? It's like this. It's, we just use packing, just pack down with a heavy object. Okay. And we just keep going inside here. It's mainly grass, layer of grass, layer of earth, layer of grass, layer of earth. And uh, if a laborer, the worker died, they just bury it at the volume. <laughs> so you get you have grass, bones, and uh, everything else. So they just pack it down. That is consistent with the technology. 2,200 years ago, it's still there. Okay, we can tell it's still there. If you go there, if you go and see this today, it will be somewhere in a desert and it's all fenced up. It's all fenced up. You can't go and touch it. You can see. It. So it's in line with the technology. So if you look at this, this is the time the first. Uh, Great Wall, uh, how to say, they use the earth and grass, they just compact it down. But right up to here, around here, then you see all this nicer and modern and steady material. But here, we have gone backward. They have done this before, the Egyptian, the Chinese have done this before. And then suddenly we can't do anything, we have no clue and then we just use mud and grass <laughs> so we we have gone backwards if you were to use that so uh, just a brief idea of how far our our history can go so you the great was kind of like the first emperor of the Xia dynasty so you're looking at 3000 years ago compared to the Egyptians, which is about 4,600 years ago. So we are 1,000 over years behind. <laughs> and this legend is quite mystical because uh, you, the great, if you, if you read about it, if you know the history of the Chinese, the beginning of Chinese, uh, history, you the great can turn into a bear and 
a, in a forest. He, he became a bear in a forest and he was fighting the big flood. And there's always a flood myth in every story, civilization. And then the wife found out about that. She got shocked and turned into stone. Kind of reminds me of uh, the Lord's wife in the Bible. You know, the lady always get to turn into stone. <laughs> So there's something like similar. And then uh, you look at the uh, Yu's father was actually a demigod. So there's always a demigod in the picture. You know, a god and a human mother. And you, therefore, is a demigod. So by that definition. So he gets to be the emperor because he managed to stop the flood. So if you look at like... Uh, Zeus and uh, Jupiter, they are God, you know. So, uh, Jupiter has Hercules, which is a demigod. His mother is uh, out many. So, there's kind of like similarity. There's always a god and a demigod and a human mother. So, the origin of Chinese history is very mythical. We also have a great flood story. So, well, that's so much for this Dong Yu. Just a little question about the Great Flood. Hmm. When, uh, what, uh, what time period do you give that when the they talk about the Great Flood? That would be like uh, 3,000 years ago. Okay. About 1,000 BC. In that time frame. Well, thank you, Bernie. That's fascinating information. You're welcome. <clears throat> And uh, the last one, okay, this one. Uh, Long Men, Long Men. This is not Long Man. Uh. <laughs> Long is dragon, Men is gate. Long Men. So we, I always hear people say Long Man, Long Man. <laughs> it's Long Men. Uh, okay. So I always like to see where it is on the map, right there. And if you use uh, Google Earth, you get a good 3D picture. So this is River Yi, I found out. <laughs> River Yi. And look at this one stretch, one kilometer long on both sides. That's where the rock cuts, rock cut caves are. I managed to find the old pictures. I like to see the old picture because they are more authentic. Those. Like nowadays, they have a lot of new structures to cover up the original rock. You know, they have like, maybe sometimes they have they have a temple here, like my DC site. They have a temple here, so you can't see the original carving. So, Bernie, are you saying that um, these structures, they straightened the river? Uh, no, no, no. To build these structures? They, sorry, I didn't get you. What do you mean? Uh, well, if you go back to the aerial view, the previous, yeah, there, see, you're pointing out that the river looks like it's been straightened. From yeah, it looks long. really straight up. Huh? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure how they do it. <laughs> okay. But it looks quite uh, natural. So you're looking at about 2,345 caves. I got this number from Wikipedia. So when when you say cave, okay, like I would say this is a cave, and these are niche. This these are niches. This is a cave. Maybe this is a cave. So there are 2,300. 45. And I would say these are niche. They, I don't think they count this as a cave. Um, if niche, I think there will be a lot more. There are like 100,000 uh, Buddha statues here. So when I look at this, I'm pretty impressed by all these random cave they carve out. 
but I'm curious about this big one here. That's the big one. That that big thing, if you were to take out based on this block size, it's so huge. It doesn't even make sense. Okay, so I, I did my own uh, little bit of 3D imagination. Uh, that would be roughly how much bedrock you have to take out before you even start the statue work. So let's take a look. You can find on the internet uh, 39 meters long, 35 meters deep, 25 meters high. Uh, so you come up to the volume of 17,000 uh, cubic meters and you're looking at around 40,000 tons. So we have to first remove this 40,000 before you can get this. Okay. So look at the proportion. How much work do you have to do just before you even start with this? This is the main event. I'm just curious, like, why don't they just do it here? They can start immediately. Right? <laughs> And uh, they say it's done in three years. That's even more spooky. <laughs> uh, three years would mean three years of 365 days. And if a day is an eight-hour day, you're to be looking at 12,000 tons. That will require a lot of planning. A lot of planning. Every day, how many chisels you have to use. How many chisels you have to make, how many rubble you have to remove, and this make it disappear by the way. We have no clue where it goes. <laughs> so um, just for that block alone, you're looking at something I find it impossible. So when you first look at it, you might say, oh. You know, they just carve on the surface, but look at it carefully. There's already 40,000 tons of limestone gone. And if you look at the surface here, it's very smooth. It feels like it's like something cuts like a butter, you know, like a knife cutting through butter. It's that simple. If I were to use chisel, I'll probably leave the chisel marks here. I don't care because I just want a statue, right? So I wouldn't waste my time polishing up the way the chisel marks here. So that's how I did. And if you look at this statue, that is only 17 meters tall compared to the 40 tons that you have to, to get out in order to have a 17 meter statue that is a bit out of proportion. Also, Bernie, the statue is a slightly different color than the rock, isn't it? Uh, like it looks lighter. So maybe the rock, that um, oh. area was carved out and then the statue was put there. Oh no, the statue is there. It's carved, okay. Yeah, I think I think the, the the statue is like at the back here. Uh, oh, it's attached. It's not like something you put on. Huh. Yeah, it's something like this statue here is carved. Right. And what about the marks from the tools that are in the cave wall or the rock surface? The mark on the tool, this one here. Uh, well, or, or the striations. Uh, no, these there's marks from the tools, like oh. around the edges here. Okay. Well, I'll let you go on. Okay. So, um, at at one glance, if you're a tourist, uh, you might feel like, oh, this is so awesome. But for me, I find it like this is awesome and mysterious and doesn't make sense. 
because if I'm if I if I'm the emperor and I want a statue of Buddha and I ask ten thousand people carve out forty thousand tons of rock, it's kind of like way out of proportion. So I want to highlight to you these kind of two marks here. Okay, it's all over the world. It's not just here. Europe, India, China, probably in Peru. <clears throat> so these are the same two marks. They are random. They can be small, they can be big, but they are definitely random. And some are random, some are in a straight line. <clears throat> so that's what I noticed. And it doesn't make sense for, for you to have it. And if you look at this, uh, these are the small spellets, 2005 of them. And this is very doable. These are small carvings, right? These are very doable. I, I wouldn't feel any suspicious there. But there's a lot. I just wonder why they need so many randomly. And then 60 pagodas, I just... I just take down this one and zoom it in, just what it. So they they kind of like carve the pagoda, put it there, or maybe it's part of the limestone is attached. And I just want to show you how the mainstream things. Uh, uh, they found a picture, and therefore this is Tang Dynasty. They did it. They found this thing, therefore the Northern Wei Dynasty, they did it. So, because of the statue and the painting, they pinned down the responsibility on them. So, 30% are Northern Wei, 60% are the Tang Dynasty. But they never asked, where are the rubble? <laughs> so, here, I want to show you, this is something very strange. Under this category, I have a compilation of machine tool marks. There's one in Sri Lanka, there's one in Sasewaman, Peru. Uh, and there are some random ones. So, why would we do this? How do you make a mistake like that? <laughs> If you did it on purpose, then why? So this this is what I want to know. You know this, this is all done in a very nice curve, right? Suddenly you have this obvious thing, like there's a big machine that went wrong. Uh, and look at this here. There's suddenly one very big one here. And these are like two here, three here, and two here. And if I were to make this so nice, okay, the statue and everything, why would I need this for just like for engineering purpose, construction purpose? Mm -hmm. What is that for? So, and this is not just here; it's all over the world. Bernie, would you mind going back one time? Just I have a question. So there's a. Yeah. Uh, Going from the left, there's there's a figure, then there's the Buddha in the middle, and then there's a very strange character next to it. What? Yeah. Yeah. With a with a with a cone head. <laughs> you see a cone head? I do. Like, am I seeing this wrong or? Uh, it's it's a broken statue. Something they said that the destruction was caused by earthquake, but I don't I don't know. Okay. Notice so, yeah, I can see what you see. It's like yeah. a yeah. but that's probably like this. It it cut off at the it's broken at that angle. Right. So it looks like a cone head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Notice how all their hands are cut off. Yeah, sometimes uh I don't know. Maybe it's done on purpose at one time. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, like in China they are very atheist. So I don't know. Yeah, but also it's notice like a um, 
all this, the waves of energy, to see all the circles and like sine waves, and it's just constant um, concentric circles that are moving through the whole design, even in yeah. the robes and in the, the jewelry around the Buddha's neck, mm -hmm. and then his aura. Yeah. It's that's fascinating to me, those marks. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think there might be information in there about energy. Yeah, yeah. I I come across that kind of uh, reading. There's something going on, like you know, Jesus. They have these halos or energy thing going. Right. Or it's the so holy figures, uh, They have this this round thing going. Yeah. But I like this this statue. Is probably it's done. If let's say it's done by human, I I can. I probably think it's not, but anyway. Uh, if you look at this statue and 40 tons taken out, they don't do a very good job at this, definitely. You know, they could have done a better job to make it more nice. So I, I just believe that when an emperor spent, if an emperor spent money to do something, it could be just all these uh, smaller jobs. But the main event is not, is not, uh, not done by human. It's already there. So the ear lobe is the measurement I get, two meters long. And based on that, I'm just wondering, this is like two by four maybe feet, two by four feet, or maybe two by three feet. It's, it's very big to be a, a hole for no purpose. I just wonder why. And it's all over the world. Are you thinking that could be some some uh, structure for scaffolding, possibly? No. If you have scaffolding to take care of a good statue, you, you know I, mean? I mean, you already carved a very good statue, right, from scaffolding. Mm -hmm. So why would you need to punch all these holes? So it's, it's all over the world. India has a lot. Sri Lanka, Peru, uh, Petra, there's a lot. I have a picture there to show you later. So when you say these are at one time done by the whatever dynasty, so these are these are highly doable human, right? But the striation is already there. That means this this whole area is already been carved out. The the megaton of rock already taken out, right? So the striations are there to prove that this was done by the same architect, the same builder. And we came along and do this, 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 you know, all the smaller stuff. So the big job done, we came in and do the small job and get the credit. <laughs> So this is what I mean, okay? If you were to put a block of stone here or wood, what is it for? There's already some some striation, some marks that goes horizontal. So maybe they smoothen out horizontally, but they cut vertically or something like that. But anyway, um, this one is in Petra, Jordan. Sorry. So this one is in Petra, Jordan. This one is in yeah, Longman. And then you have in uh, Turkey, plenty of that. Uh, most of the megalithic sites, if you look around, you get all these two marks. I have one PowerPoint for this alone. So two, uh, two warriors surrounded by rectangular holes, yeah. This one, I, I'm just curious about this thing. They managed to stick a block of stone here. I wonder what is that for. Rooney, I'm wondering if um, you are open to um, pausing the presentation so we can open it up to questions and discussion. Yeah, yeah.